Hello, in this video, what we're going to be going over is the airport general BIM checks for Revit. Here in BIM interoperability tools, come right over here to setup, and this is where you can find the general BIM checks for airports. When I click on setup, it's gonna bring up the current check set file, and what I'm going to do is co come right over here and click on open. When I click on open, now I can either go to any sort of recent files that I want to use again, or come up here to browse, or I can just simply scroll down here and see that I have general airport model fidelity checks. When I click on that, this is actually going to download it from the BIMinteroperabilitytools.com website. So this check set file is based on the Denver Airport Standards, a series of Revit model fidelity checks based on best practices and industry standards for typical airport models. In order for me to load this, I can just come right over here to click on OK. Now that I've loaded this, now we can see that we have a list of airport model checks, critical checks, model setup checks, model composition, viewing and drawing composition, annotation, and model annotation. If I want to check any particular individual check, I need to make sure that first the heading is actually checked, and then of course over here the individual check is checked on. I could turn off any header here and it will skip that header plus any of its checks in that heading. Coming over here to view and drawing composition, there are some checks that are going to be hard pass or fail checks. Here for 4.4, this is checking view and schedule names on sheets. This checks if views and schedules on sheets are all caps, numbers, and spaces. So what this is going to do is that this is going to check pass or fail if all the views and schedules on sheets are all caps or not. Another kind of check is going to be a reporting check. Here, 4.3 just gives me the total number of sheets in the model. This will report the total number and then up here, views not on sheets. This will report the number of views, not including views that can be placed on more than one sheet, like schedules and legends, that are not placed on the sheet. And that's a good example of a reporting check. If I'm happy with my current checks and how it's set up, I can come right over here to say save and close. When I'm ready to run the check, First, of course, come up here to setup and make sure that you've set this up according to how you want it to run. In this example, I'm going to just run model composition and really what I'm looking for is not blank mark values, not blank type values, but I'm looking for in place families and if generic models are being used. So I'm gonna check off everything except for those checks. What this is going to do is that this is going to give me a reporting check. This is going to check a pass or fail. This is again going to give me a reporting check or check a pass or fail. So I'm looking for these four checks here. I'm going to say save and close. And now I'm ready to run the check. Simply come up here to model checker, click on run. Make sure that I can either add in the models, remove all models, check for all links or uncheck links. I'm happy here. I'm going to click on run report. After a brief moment, it gives me my report. So here under airport model checks, you can see here that it actually skips all the other checks here, 37 checks, 37 not run, nine checks, nine not run, so on and so forth. Under model composition though, I have 10 checks, one passed, one failed, and then of course I have the two that are the reporting checks. So let's take a look at what's going on. So here I have no in-place families, so this is good, I pass. Here it gives me a list of any sort of in-place families, I'm sorry, right above the element check is the reporting list. So this gives me the total number of in-place families, of course zero. 
here. Now I have generic models. It actually was to check that generic models, if I was using generic model families in my model, here I can see what generic models I have going on in my family. And here it gives me my list. Now, of course, when I take a look at this list, I can, of course, click on the magnifying glass. It will actually open up a view right here inside my model. And I can take a look at what this actually is. And sure enough, it is a generic model. Now, if I'm ready to actually export this so that I can create a report, I could certainly just come right over here to create an HTML report or an Excel report. Now, something to note about the Excel report is that this is going to be a snapshot in time, but the Excel report is actually also used to build onto itself. So that means that I can keep running this report and keep ensuring that my checks or my model is actually passing the checks that I want it to pass and failing the checks that I expect to fail, or I could just continue to get out my report for every single time that I want to run this check so that I can go back to uh, my designers and go back to my engineers and make sure that these issues are taken care of. Something else to note for this particular report is that I can come right over here, say close, and if I ever want to take a look at that report again, I can just come right up here to say view report. Now this is going to be the most recent report and this report here actually stays with the Revit model. 